Welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this lecture, we're going to be discussing eukaryotes. This is going to be part three of our lecture series on eukaryotes. If you haven't already done so, go watch our part one and part two lectures on this topic on our website, www.madmedicine.org. Now, if you haven't also already done so, please subscribe to our channel because your support means a lot to us and turn off the ad block and please watch those dumb ads. We know that they are stupid, but they allow us to keep these lectures completely free for your education educational purposes. And with that being said, in this lecture, we're going to be discussing high yield facts, okay, high yield facts about eukaryotes. So the main thing you need to know is that eukaryotes contain membrane bound organelles, unlike prokaryotes, prokaryotes have no membrane bound organelles, and the membrane from these uh, for these organelles and for the cell is a phospholipid bilayer. That phospholipid bilayer or the phospholipid has a hydrophobic head, which is going to repel water. Think about phobia. Phobia means to be scared of. So the head is scared of water. So it's going to repel water. And a hydrophilic tail, this is going to attract water. Okay, and this is what the membrane-bound organelle looks like. As you can see, this is the hydrophobic head, hydrophilic tails. This is a two-part structure, so you actually have two components or two layers to the membrane itself. In the membrane, you're going to have these channel proteins, which is going to allow things to enter through the membrane, very important. And then you will also have other components like cholesterol and other proteins in the membrane. Very high-yield topic or very high-yield concept, I would say. Now, when it comes to the actual cell itself, the cells, in uh, especially for eukaryotic cells have organelles so let's talk about these organelles organelles essentially are little tiny structures in the cell that allow the cell to be able to carry out a bunch of functions and I like to think of the cell as a city so we're gonna call this cell city okay and each organelle has a function and is gonna be related to the function of something in a city. So let's talk about this. The first organelle, and arguably the most important organelle in a eukaryotic cell is a nucleus. This is the control center of the cell. Now the nucleus is actually surrounded by a double membrane called a nuclear membrane, and it has these pores called nuclear pores that allow for the exchange of material. Very important, because the DNA has to be able to be translated, uh, sorry, it has to be transcribed into RNA and then translated into uh, proteins, so essentially you need to have these nuclear pores that allow for the removal and for the entry of material, especially genetic material. I like to think of the nucleus as the city hall. Okay, because this is where all the decisions are made and this is where a lot of things are decided and the nucleolus, which is a portion inside of the nucleus, I like to think of as the mayor's office. These are going to be very, very dumb uh, anecdotes, but, you know, remember it, it'll make this easier. Then we got the mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell. This is the nuclear power plant. Meaning it's just, it's mainly just a power plant. There's nothing nuclear about it, but, uh, you know, nuclear energy is a new thing nowadays, as the kids like to say. So this is the power plant of the cell. Now, the mitochondria is actually semi-autonomous because they actually contain their own DNA and genes, and these are called your mitochondrial you guessed it, DNA. And fun fact, the DNA that you're dealing with is circular DNA. I didn't write this because it's not that big of a deal, but you need to know it's circular. You should know it's circular. And eukaryotic DNA is mainly linear. So you can pretty much guess that a mitochondria at some point was a prokaryote that was engulfed inside of our cells, but it's actually a prokaryote. Pretty important. And another thing that supports this theory is that the mitochondria replicates uh, independently of the nucleus. It replicates via binary fission. You know what else but replicates via binary fission? Like prokaryotes. Prokaryotes replicate via binary fission as well. So this further uh, certifies the theory that the mitochondria was once a prokaryote that was engulfed by the cell and is now just, you know, hanging out in our cells. Pretty cool. Mitochondria also contain an enzyme called cytochrome C within the intermembrane space. If cytochrome C is released, and how would it be released? Essentially through damaging the mitochondria. If that happens, the cell will go through a process called apoptosis, aka cell death. We like to call it programmed cell death at times, 
okay, programmed or unprogrammed. Programmed would mean that the cell was told to die off, okay, and we wanted the cell to die off. Unprogrammed would be essentially uh, some damage occurred to the mitochondria, and then the mitochondria released cytochromcine into the cytoplasm, and that induced cell death, apoptosis. That's why mitochondria is so important, other than the fact that it's also the powerhouse of the cell. Then we got lysosomes. Lysosomes contain these hydrolytic enzymes that break down the debris. They also play a role in apoptosis. I like to think of lysosomes as the garbage men. Okay, because they are essentially breaking things down. All right. And then we also have something related to a lysosome called a peroxisome. Peroxisomes contain hydrogen peroxide, which actually aid in the metabolism alongside lysosomes. So these are also essentially. Oh my God, I spelled that wrong. Wrong. Garbage men. Garbage men. I promise I know how to speak. I don't, uh, uh, well, I promise I know how to spell. Um, sometimes I forget how to speak. These are also garbage men. So I think of garbage men number one, garbage men number two, all right? Then you got the endoplasmic reticulum. The endoplasmic reticulum is actually connected to the nuclear en uh, envelope. Um, and the thing is, the endoplasmic reticulum has two components in and of itself. You got the rough endoplasmic reticulum that contains the ribosomes. And this is mainly where the mRNA that's coming out of the nucleus is going to be converted into protein. It's not converted, but it's actually going to be translated into protein. So at the rough RNA, sorry, the rough endoplasmic reticulum that contains ribosomes will translate uh, mRNA to make the proteins that then are going to go to the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. And the smooth endoplasmic reticulum uh, does not have uh, ribosomes. It plays a role in the lipid synthesis, detoxification, and protein transportation. So these proteins can go to the smooth endoplasmic reticulum and then be transported. Now, where are they mostly going to go? Uh, usually, they'll go from the endoplasmic reticulum to the next uh, uh, organelle called the Golgi apparatus. This is a very important part of uh, the cell because the Golgi apparatus is going to modify and repackage all of this material, the protein transport uh, components that were sent to it, as well as other things. It'll modify them, it'll repackage them, and then they'll send it to the cell and beyond the cell if it needs to go outside of the cell if it needs to be secreted. So this is like the post office. And the endoplasmic reticulum, I would like to say, is a factory. Cool, cool. Pretty straightforward. And then we got the highway system. The highway system we can find in the cytoplasm. And within the cytoplasm, we have a network of highways called the cytoskeleton. And the cytoskeleton is made up of three main things, okay? And the cytoskeleton is essentially the highways in our cell. Highways slash roads in cell city. So the first component are intermediate filaments. These are involved in cell-to-cell -cell adhesion as well as the integrity of the cytoskeleton. Very important. They're able to stand a lot of tension and they make the cell very rigid, which is important. And they also anchor other organelles like the nucleus to where they are. Important for making sure that the proper function of organelles is maintained and that they're not interacting with other organelles like lysosomes that might actually damage that uh, organelle just by interacting with it. Very high yield, very important. Then you have microfilaments. These are solid polymerized rods of actin that actually play a role in cytokinesis. Uh, think of the cell cycle and my, uh, my, uh, mitosis. Essentially, they're gonna play a role in the cleavage furrow that gets formed when the cell is about to split into two cells, okay? So it is actually playing a role right here. Uh, and then finally, you have microtubules. Microtubules are hollow polymers of tubulin that make up the structure of cilia and flagella. Cilia and flagella, okay? So these two components, cilia and flagella, are pretty important because they are in your human body in very specific spots, okay? Very important to understand that. So let's talk about these two uh, two essentially structures of the cell. The first is cilia. These are projections from the cell that are primary in, primarily involved in the movement of material along the surface of the cell. Okay, 
Where would you see these in our human body or in the body? You are going to see these in the respiratory tract. They line the respiratory tract and they are involved in the movement of mucus because you don't want to have things going down into your lungs and you need to have a mechanism to remove, like let's say dust from going way down deep into your lungs, causing inflammation, causing pneumonia. The way we do that is by cilia. Cilia will take the mucus that traps the dust and it will make it go back out to our mouth and then we can breathe that dust out all because of cilia. So what they're doing is this is the cell, okay? Let's just say it's, this is the cell itself. You have these projections, okay, on the surface of the cell so that when something comes along the way, it just says, you know what, keep going. You don't need to be here. Very, very important. And then you have flagella. Flagella are structures that are involved in the movement of the cell itself. And they're one component of sperm cells. They help with the movement of sperm cells, especially in the reproductive tract, okay? So the sperm cell looks something similar to this right here that I'm drawing. And this right here is the actual flagella. It allows the sperm cell to be able to move forward. So this is actually moving moving the cell and then this is moving things away or towards the cell very high yield and with that, we've covered pretty much all the high yield facts you need to know about eukaryotes. If you thought this was helpful or if you liked our video, please consider subscribing to our channel because your support means a lot to us. If you want to see more educational lectures like this, go to our website, www.madmedicine.org, where you can find more educational lectures completely free. Thank you.